Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, please rise as you are able and welcome the LSU Law Center class of 2017.
Good morning. I'm Tom Galligan, the Dean of the LSU Paul M. A. Bear Law Center. On behalf of the students, faculty, and staff of the Law Center, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our commencement exercises for the class of 2017. As we begin, I ask that we pause for a moment of silence. Today, we remember in our thoughts and prayers our graduates and our family members who are no longer with us or who are unable to be here today. Thank you. To open our ceremony, I invite you to please remain standing and join in singing our national anthem led by Ms. Elena Richard, followed by the invocation by Trenton Ball, Student Bar Association Executive President. Elena. Classmates, family, and friends, please bow your heads. We come together today to celebrate a very special occasion. In a short while, we will receive our diplomas, a representation of our determination and perseverance over the past three years. While our diplomas symbolize our academic achievements throughout law school, we all know that it represents much more than that. It represents the many late nights with our study groups, the stressful phone calls with family and friends, and the numerous prayers asking for guidance throughout our times of need. This day warrants celebration. However, we must always be grateful for those who helped us along the way. To our friends and family, we thank you for the endless love and support during the times that we needed it most. To our professors, for guiding us through the trials of our legal education and preparing us for the challenges we will face in our practice. And to our classmates sitting next to us, we challenge each other in ways that we're trying at times, but as a result, developed a sense of camaraderie that is unique to the class of 2017 and one that will stay with us forever. As we recognize those who have helped us get to this point, we also pray for continued guidance as we take the next step in our professional lives. We pray that the blessings bestowed upon us will accompany us throughout our legal careers and that we always remember the memories developed with the LSU Law Class of 2017. Amen. Thank you both. Please be seated. It's now my privilege to introduce some of the special guests who have joined us today. Please stand as your names are called. Louis Free, founder of Free Group International, former director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and today's keynote speaker.
Ralph McAllister, founder and CEO of Louisiana Business Inc. and a member of the LSU Board of Supervisors. <laughs> Dr. Richard Kobeck, Executive Vice President and Provost of LSU. <laughs> the Honorable Jefferson Hughes, Associate Justice of the Louisiana Supreme Court and LSU Law Class of 1978. And from the LSU Law Center, Associate Deans Andrea Carroll and Ray Diamond. We are very pleased to have our golden graduates, members of the LSU class of 1967 with us today. They are here to celebrate their 50th reunion. We hope today will be meaningful to all of our golden graduates and a great reminder of their years at the LSU Law Center. Please join me in recognizing and paying tribute to the LSU Law Golden Graduates members of the class of 1967. I now want to recognize my colleagues, the outstanding faculty of the LSU Law Center. These men and women are the teachers and scholars who are vital to the mission of the Law Center. These professors educate and mentor our students. For many of our graduates, they are among the most influential people in their lives. Please join with me in applauding our faculty for their dedication to our students and our Law Center. I also want to recognize our adjunct faculty, some of whom have joined us today. All adjunct faculty are listed on the back of your program. These are distinguished attorneys and judges who generously share their time and knowledge with our students to provide a more enriching academic experience. Please join me in thanking them for their contributions to the mission of the Law Center. The staff at the Law Center are remarkable individuals and an incredible team. They are the ones who have brought this commencement ceremony to fruition. Many of our staff are here today, and I ask that you join me in recognizing and thanking them as well, please. Now, I'm just completing my first academic year here as dean, and I would personally like to thank all of the folks we have just recognized for making my first year back wonderful. They have propped me up at every turn, and while we have faced and will continue to face challenges in the volatile world of legal education, this year we have done it together, and we have made some very positive changes. And while doing so, we've also managed to have a little fun along the way. To all of them, I express my deep respect and my heartfelt gratitude. Now, I also want to give a special shout out to this wonderful group of students, the class of 2017. They have been fantastic as I have tried to learn the ropes. They've been welcoming, patient, forgiving, and flat out awesome. They have done their best to break me in, and I appreciate it. In addition to personally thanking them, we all want to recognize and thank the 3L class for its Leave a Legacy class gift. Each year, the graduating class collaborates with the alumni office to find a way to commemorate its transition from being students to being alumni. This year's class unanimously chose to dedicate its senior class gift to the naming of the Cheney C. Joseph classroom. Just last week, we held a dedication ceremony to honor former interim dean and vice chancellor Cheney Joseph and to formally name his favorite classroom, W210, in his honor. Members of the class of 2017 were on hand for that ceremony. Today, like last week, we are joined by Cheney's wife, Mary Joseph. Mary, we're deeply grateful to you for sharing Cheney with us for so many years and for being with us this morning. To the, to the class of 2017 and to Mary Joseph, we say thank you. 
Now, let me ask you all a favor, the graduates. There are a lot of people who have contributed to your success and to all that you have accomplished. They include our faculty, your family, your friends. Many of them are with you here today. Others are with you in spirit. What I want to ask you to do right now is stand up. We know the faculty's here. You can thank them like that. But turn around and thank those people right there for everything that they have done for you. Okay, before we go on, let's just stop for a second. We're going to take a little break. We're not going anywhere. We're just going to take a break. Take a deep breath. Take another one. All right, I got about half of you. Come on, one more. Okay, after all, this is a really big day for you. Don't let it pass without pausing and reflecting just a little bit. You all have done an awful lot to get here. You have completed one of the most demanding educational programs in the world. You have finished law school. And you have done it at LSU, an institution that still prides itself, as you all know, on its rigor. You should be proud of yourselves. I know all those folks you just thanked are very proud of you. I know we're proud of you. Enjoy the feeling and enjoy the moment. Like so many things, it will pass all too fast, and before you know it, you'll be just as old, maybe not as bald as me, and you will say, gosh, it seems like only yesterday I was graduating from law school. I bet some of our golden grads are thinking that right now. I know it feels that way for me. At my law school, like LSU, we had a student give a short speech at commencement and I was lucky to be the speaker for my class. In that speech, relying mainly on the words of Carl Llewellyn, the legal philosopher, I told my classmates that we had become law graduates and that the chore was now for us to become human beings once again. I share that advice with you today. You will very soon, I promise, be a law graduate, but make sure you are still a kind, compassionate, dedicated, hard-working, and life-loving human being. So be a human being, but you are also a lawyer. Now, what does that mean? Well, up to now, thanks largely to your parents and families, it's been all about you. It's been all about your accomplishments. You've earned good grades. Some of you probably excelled at sports or creative endeavors, at writing or science, maybe even math. You've received honors. My gosh, today you are graduating from law school and we'll all be congratulating you and telling you how proud we are of you and more. We are feeding your egos, just as the recognition of your individual accomplishments has done over the years of your life. I know there's going to be more as lawyers. There will be no shortage of food for your egos. But, and I wish I had understood this better when I was graduating from law school, from today on, it isn't just about you. Let me say it again. I would tell myself too. From today on, it isn't just about you. As a lawyer, you do not put yourself first. As a lawyer, you serve. You serve your clients. Their interests are paramount. You must put their interests above your own. That is how you help them achieve and face difficult situations. And that is how sometimes you help them turn their dreams into reality. In addition, you're an officer of the court. You serve the law. You serve the system. Now, don't mistake what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to always accept the way things are or the way the system is. Fight to change it. Fight to do what's right. Fight to make it better. But in fighting to improve the system, know that you are a part of that system and that you serve that system. By changing it for the better, you serve it. Finally, you serve the interests of what we hope will always be a free country and a nation of equals. As lawyers, you are a defender of that freedom and a defender of the promise of equality that has made this nation great. As we continue to realize the dream of true equality and justice, I know we will be even better. You can make it happen. So today, I'm really proud of what you have accomplished as individuals. At the same time, I'm optimistic because having gotten to know you just a little bit this past year, I have every faith 
that as lawyers, you are going to put others first. And in doing so, I know you are going to be great, and that means that the rest of us are in some pretty good hands. So thank you for listening, and congratulations. Before I recognize our commencement speaker, I'd like to recognize Mr. Pat Juno, who is in the audience today, seated near the Golden Grads. Pat, where are you? <laughs> Mr. Juno is a 1965 graduate of the Law Center and has been engaged in private practice since that time. He is a member of the Louisiana Association of Defense Counsel, Louisiana State Bar Association, and the American Bar Association. He is past president of the Louisiana Association of Defense Counsel. He was the 2006 LSU Law Center Distinguished Alumnus of the Year. Pat was instrumental in connecting the Law Center with our distinguished keynote speaker, and we are very grateful for his assistance in that endeavor. Pat, thank you very much, and thank you for being here today. And now to our speaker. Louis J. Free is founder of the consulting firm Free Group International Solutions, LLC, established in 2007. Mr. Free is also a founder and partner of Free, Sporkin, and Sullivan, LLP, a Washington, D.C. law firm, also established in 2007. From September 2012 through December 2015, Mr. Free was a partner in and immediate past chair of the executive committee of Pepper Hamilton, LLP. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Rutgers College in 1971, Rutgers School of Law in 1974, and New York University School of Law with his LLM in 1984. Mr. Free joined the Federal Bureau of Investigation as a special agent in 1975 and was assigned to the New York City Field Division and later to FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. He also served as a first lieutenant in the United States Army Judge Advocate General Corps. In 1981, Mr. Free joined the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York as an assistant United States Attorney, later serving as associate and deputy United States Attorney. In 1991, President George H.W. Bush appointed Mr. Free as a United States District Court Judge for the Southern District of New York. In 1993, President William Jefferson Clinton appointed Judge Free as the fifth director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a post he held until 2001. After stepping down in 2001, Mr. Free joined MBNA America Bank in Delaware as Vice Chan Chairman and General Counsel. Mr. Free is an advisor to Millennium Partners LP and a board member of the Max Planck Florida Institute. He is also counsel to the U.S. Naval Academy Foundation. From 2006 to 2013, he was a member of the Bristol Myers Squibb Company Board of Directors where he chaired the Governance Committee. He and his wife, Marilyn, have six sons, ranging in age from 18 to 30. Mr. Free, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom, and to the distinguished uh, faculty and guests, and particularly to our graduates and their families. Congratulations and welcome. This is a wonderful day, an exciting day. And thank you for letting me share it with you uh, and make some brief remarks. I gave a speech uh, years ago at the Naval Academy. I'd spent days preparing for it. A few years later, I ran into a Naval officer and he said, Mr. Free, he said, uh, you spoke at our commencement. He said, you were the best speaker we ever had. And I said, well, thank you very much. I said, what did I say? And he said, well, we don't remember, but you were really short. Um, <laughs> Enjoy this day. Uh, it's a time to look back, to look ahead, but really it's a day to enjoy. And to your wonderful families and friends here who have supported you, I know how important a day it is for them. And you want to have fun and enjoy the moment. I remember when I was uh, nominated for the FBI job, it was a family day as it turned out. We had four young boys. And the night before, my wife and I had the 
perennial debate, should we bring the four young boys to the ceremony or not? And we decided we would bring them. So I'm in the Oval Office with the President. Everybody's assembled out in the Rose Garden and I notice a slight shift of field knowing instinctively it's one of my boys doing something. We go out, the president introduces me, I notice one of my boys is completely wet. And my wife is looking at me, telling me, I told you we shouldn't bring the boys to the graduation. So what had happened is the four-year-old was standing next to a pond. So if you go to the Rose Garden, be very careful, there's a pond there. And the two-year-old, seeing his opportunity, pushes him in causing complete pandemonium. We find out about this later. The president thinks this is really funny, right? So he said, I'd like to talk to Sean. Sean is the pusher. So Sean comes into the Oval Office, standing before the president of the United States, a lawyer, right? So he knows how to ask a question. And he starts interrogating the two-year-old. And he says, Sean, do you know who I am? Sean looks up at him and says, no. And then he said, did you push your brother into the pond? A non-leading, perfectly sound question. Sean looks up at the chief law enforcement officer of the United States and says, no. <laughs> now, I was embarrassed as a dad, but as a lawyer, I was proud of him. <laughs> In those days, before the Supreme Court ruled on the exculpatory no, you could actually say that without committing a false statement. The point is, this is a very important day which you will always remember as a family day. 42 years ago, I graduated from my law school. At that time, 1974, uh, we had a White House under political siege. We had a war that seemed like it would never end. And we had the threat of catastrophic climate change in the form of nuclear war. This is the heart of the Cold War. And as young lawyers, some of us went into public service, some of us went to clerkships, some of us went to law firms, but we knew that the world as it was, was challenging, and it was very important for us to get engaged in that. And that's what's so wonderful about your profession. You will have the opportunity whether you want to be a lawyer or not, whether you want to practice law, to work and contribute in the most important areas and help not just this country but this world deal with challenges that actually could overwhelm uh, all of us in our, in our future lives. So what are the challenges? Well, if you talk to scientists, uh, there are many. There's population stress. There's climate stress, there's environmental stress, economic stress. One of the most important challenges that you will face as lawyers is a growing uh, concern that all of us have about the respect that's necessary to promote and protect the rule of law. And the populist notion that judges and lawyers are not doing what they, they are supposed to do uh, really can undermine the whole system of law that our framers put together in Philadelphia in 1789. The framers were very, very smart in the creation of three branches. If you think of some of the people who wrote the Constitution, uh, Thomas Jefferson, who didn't believe in a central bank, George Washington, who didn't believe in a standing army, they created a government that was a state government represented by a federal government in Washington. But they created three equal branches. Two of them are political, and one of them is non-political. As lawyers, you will become associated with, some of you may even become members of the third non-political branch. What's so important about that branch is that it's a check and balance on the two political branches. What are the things that that branch does and that you can do as lawyers to enhance the rule of law, make sure that there is equal justice, and make sure that that law is respected and followed? So I noted a couple of things 
uh, that I think would be very important. One is to keep a fair and realistic perspective. As you change from law students to lawyers, keep in mind that successful lawyers have to have a healthy and realistic perception. You have to be able to think what a judge is looking at, what a jury is looking at, what is the witness thinking, what is opposing counsel thinking. Your ability to have a realistic and flexible perception is very, very essential to being a good lawyer. Secondly, as Thomas Jefferson said, in matters of principle, stand like a rock. In matters of style, swim with the tide. You have to have those strong rock core principles that whether you're in a courtroom or sitting with a client, you are loyal and you protect those core principles. And those principles are essential uh, for your practice and also for your reputation. One of the great stories that I heard years ago was a story about uh, Ulysses S. Grant. Not a very well-known story to me at the time. When Grant took the surrender of General Lee at Appomattox, he dictated very generous terms of surrender. The soldiers were allowed to keep their weapons, to keep their horses, to go home with only the condition that they obey the law of the United States. He had negotiated those conditions with President Lincoln. President Lincoln is now gone, and President Johnson decides on his own that he's going to indict not just General Lee, but the entire general staff of the Confederacy for treason. And an indictment is actually returned in the Eastern District of Virginia for treason. And treason at that time, of course, carried a death penalty. When Grant heard this, he was dismayed and, was, he, and he was angry. And he went to see President Johnson. And he said, I gave my word uh, that the conditions of surrender would be as we agreed. And President Johnson rebuffed him and he said, well, I'm the president now and I don't care what President Lincoln said. And Grant at that point did something that some of us never have an opportunity to do, but it was a exercise of moral courage on the highest level. He said to President Johnson, uh, if you don't dismiss that indictment, I will resign my commission. Grant, of course, at the time was the most popular figure in the United States. And Johnson, uh, in fear of the reaction of this resignation, uh, ordered the indictment to be dismissed. It's an old story, but it's a important reminder and almost a beacon for lawyers and judges, but particularly for lawyers, that as you practice, as you have opportunities uh, to make judgment, to give counsel and give advice, on matters of principle, you have to stand like a rock. You have to be willing uh, to do what Grant, in that case, was willing to do. You've got to follow the law. As the dean said, sometimes the law needs to be changed, and you can be agents of that change. But in the meantime, your job as officers of the court is to follow the law. As lawyers, you will be acting as both a sword and a shield for your clients, and also for the rule of law. They will rely upon you, judges will rely upon you uh, to follow that law. Stick to the facts. Uh, there was an old uh, TV show, your parents may remember it, called Dragnet, and there was a character named uh, Joe Friday, he's a detective in LA, and he had a statement that became an idiom for our generation, which was just the facts, ma'am. And as lawyers, that's an essential element of what you do, just the facts. When Galileo, remember, was uh, taken to the Inquisition because he was writing that the uh, sun was stationary and the earth moved around the sun, he was hauled in for a trial and made to recant because the religious belief at the time was that uh, it was the opposite revolution. And he wrote that your belief doesn't change the facts. The facts are what they are. And as lawyers, you have to be loyal to the facts. You have to know how to gather them. 
analyze them, present them, and use them, and you have to do it within the scope of the law. Try to make public service a part of your practice and your life. Uh, one, it's a wonderful example to those in the profession and those who look to the profession for leadership and guidance. Also, I think you'll find it's, it's exciting and satisfying. Uh, most of the pro bono work that I do now is far more exciting than my other work uh, because it's requiring different type solutions and interacting with people that you don't normally come into contact with in the normal course. Help your client avoid and solve problems. Uh, I've seen lawyers in my, in my time that you know, can find a problem for every solution. Your job as lawyers is to solve problems and avoid problems. And sometimes that doesn't mean doing what lawyers like to do or are expected to do or even are paid to do. Your job is to find those problems and to try to solve them. Don't make your practice personal. I had a case once when I was a judge. The two lawyers hated each other and the litigation went on ad infinitum because of the dislike they had for each other where the merits and actually the interests of their clients really required a different solution and a different set of activities. Being a lawyer is a, is a customer service business. Um, much like all the customer service relations you have, it's, it's exactly that and something that you need to keep in mind as you practice. Um, develop your own clients, uh, whether you're working in a corporation, whether you're working in a law firm, whether you're a solo practitioner. It gives you uh, a lot of satisfaction it also gives you a lot of leverage and the ability to make decisions on your own. Your reputation is so important. Uh, within a very short period of time, those of you who get into a private practice and also those of you who may work for a government agency, you develop a reputation very quickly in this business. Uh, and it's a reputation that once formed is hard to change. So when new lawyers would come into the courthouse, uh, judges routinely ask other judges, do you know this lawyer? And what's your history with them or her or him? Very, very quickly, even in a big courthouse like the Southern District of New York, lawyers early on begin to acquire a reputation. It's very, very important that you uh, develop that and protect it. Don't be afraid to fire a client right? Uh, you don't want to make that a regular part of your practice, particularly if you're in a law firm. But don't be afraid to fire a client. That brings you back to principle number one, which is that you have your principles, you have your values, and on many, uh, on, on many occasions, you know, your client will want you to do something or ask you to do something or tell you they're going to do something uh, that you just can't uh, you can't allow. You can't allow it as an officer of the court and you have to take steps and actions to correct it. And sometimes that's not so easy. I think um, the other point and the last point I wanted to make with you this morning is that protecting the rule of law and protecting our judges and our courts is really a important obligation of you now as officers of the court. As the non-political branch, uh, the courts depend on the credibility that they have in the community and the respect that they have in the community in order to function. When a court issues an order, maybe there's a marshal to enforce the order, but the order is really enforceable because of the respect and the deference and the constitutional protection and authority uh, that that order has. As officers of the court, it's very, very important that you continue to protect that rule of law. In the United States, unlike many other countries, in our history, only three judges have been assassinated because they were judges. Judge Wood in Texas, Judge Duranco in New York, who was actually the judge that I succeeded in the Southern District of New York, 
and Judge Vans in Alabama, uh, which was a long, complicated uh, case, which I actually ended up prosecuting. The point is, unlike many other countries, I just came back from uh, Palermo, Italy, where we had the 25th anniversary of the assassination of two judges in a uh, mafia case. And throughout the recent history in Italy, but in many other countries, judges, lawyers, police officers, regularly murdered and assassinated. The respect for law is very different than it is here in the United States. Learned Hand was one of our uh, judges in the Southern District of New York and gave a speech one day in 1944 called The Spirit of Liberty. If you get a chance to see the whole speech, it's quite, uh, quite inspiring, but I wanna read just part of it to you. And Judge Hand said, liberty lies in the hearts of men and women. When it dies, there is no constitution, no law, no court can save it. The spirit of liberty is the spirit which is not too sure it is right. Spirit which seeks to understand the minds of others and, and of other men and women. And he says, too much hopes upon constitutions, upon laws and courts, these are false hopes. And what he was saying in 1944 is really the the charge that I think you should all have now as young lawyers and officers of the court. Every country, and I've been all over the world, whether it's a democratic country or a totalitarian country, if you read their laws and their constitutions, remarkably, they read just like ours. They have the same principles stated. Uh, the issue is nobody abides by them. In many of those countries, the rule of law is not followed, and consequently, the protections that we take for granted, the equal justice under law that we enjoy, is not the rule of thumb in many of those places. So what Judge Hand was saying, it's really the lawyers, it's the offices of the court, it's the judges uh, that are able to give us a tremendous advantage in our democracy. A democracy that's not perfect. The founders uh, talked about forming a more perfect union uh, they knew when they wrote the Constitution that it wasn't perfect. It's not perfect today. But the judicial branch and its officers, which are all of you, are going to be expected and looked to uh, for keeping that rule of law in the spirit of liberty alive and strong. So as you go forth, I know this isn't much of a break for you today. You jump right into your bar review. Some of you have already started that. Then you have your exams and then you're off to the races. But you know what? It's a, it's a wonderful achievement and a remarkable milestone for you and your families today, which you should enjoy. And you should go forth and understand that with this background in this wonderful law school, uh, there's nothing you can't do. Some of you will become lawyers. Some of you will do other things. Uh, but the training, the discipline, the tools that you've learned here will serve you well, whether you're working in the government, private firms, or doing other things. Enjoy the day. Congratulations on a remarkable achievement. Um, have fun, and God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Free, for your words of wisdom and inspiration. You, you gave us way more than just the facts. Um, and now we'd like to give you three mementos of this auspicious occasion, uh, if you don't mind coming up once again. First, on behalf of the state of Louisiana, this letter of recognition from Governor John Bell Edwards, also an LSU law alumnus, by the way, expresses gratitude for your unwavering commitment to the rule of law and for your efforts in the pursuit of justice throughout your remarkable career. Thank you very much.
And on behalf of the LSU Law Center, I present to you this certificate of commendation for your devotion to the enforcement of laws of the United States, for defending the United States and its citizens against threats to our homeland, and for your distinguished service as a federal prosecutor, district judge, and director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And, and finally, and, and Mr. Free will ship this, don't worry, um, is a framed copy of the cover of the program from today, your bio, and a purple and gold LSU Law graduation tassel. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we come to the most important part of the program, the conferring of degrees. Before I call on Mr. Rolf McAllister of the LSU Board of Supervisors, I want to take note of the academic and service honors that we will recognize today. First, a note on the academic regalia worn by our graduates. Graduates, the robes that you wear today have bell-shaped sleeves with three velvet chevrons indicating you are receiving a doctoral degree. The colors of your academic hood signify both your academic discipline and the college or university where your degree is earned. The purple and gold in the folds of the hood signifies Louisiana State University. The outside of the hood is trimmed in purple velvet, royal purple, indicating that law is the supreme authority in our system of government and that your degree is in law. Wear your robes and your hoods with pride, you have earned them. Each year, the local chapter of the Order of the Coif elects to membership from the top 10% of the graduating class those students who are deemed qualified. The Louisiana chapter was established in 1942, and its purpose is to stimulate scholarly work of the highest order and to foster and promote a high standard of professional conduct. Today, we congratulate our 2017 Law Center graduates who have been named members of the Order of the Coif. Their names are listed in the program. Students recognized as the Order of the Coif are wearing white coifs on their mortar boards, or TAMs. In addition to the Order of the Coif, 2017 Juris Doctor and Graduate Diploma in Comparative Law candidates may receive their degrees summa cum laude, magna cum laude, or cum laude. These additional honors are reserved for those students graduating within the top 25% of the class. Degrees are awarded summa cum laude to students ranked in the top 2% of the class magna cum laude to those ranked in the next 10% of the class, and cum laude to students ranked in the following 13% of the class. Students graduating with these academic honors may be recognized by their honor cords. Those graduating summa cum laude wear two gold and two purple cords. Magna cum laude graduates wear two gold cords, and cum laude graduates wear two purple cords. Got it? The names of our honor graduates are listed in the program. Today, we also recognize with pride students who have performed at least 50 hours of pro bono service. We are proud of the commitment of the Public Interest Law Society at the Law Center and are pleased to include this service distinction in our recognition of graduates. Students completing over 50 hours of pro bono service wear two white graduation cords, and students completing over 100 hours wear two white cords and two green cords. And now, it is my pleasure to call up Mr. Rolf McAllister, member of the LSU Board of Supervisors, for the conferring of degrees. Thank you, Mr. McAllister, for being with us to discharge this important responsibility. Mr. McAllister, on behalf of the faculty of the Law Center, it gives me great pleasure to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the Juris Doctor degree, the Graduate Diploma in Comparative Law, and the Masters of Laws degree. Will the graduates of the class of 2017 please stand? Thank you, Dean Galligan. 
Uh, I am honored to be here today uh, for this day of celebration and new beginnings and to carry out this important responsibility, especially because my father, my brother, my brother-in-law are all alums of this outstanding law school. It is an exciting day, so let's proceed. Upon the high recommendation of the faculty of the Law Center and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Louisiana State University Board of Supervisors, I confer the degrees of Juris Doctor, Graduate Diploma in Comparative Law, and Masters of Law upon the candidates who have satisfied the requirement for those degrees. In receiving these degrees, you are accepting a solemn obligation to your fellow citizens throughout your professional careers to serve the administration of justice, to maintain the respects of the courts of which you will become officers, and to uphold the dignity and sanctity of the law of the land. Congratulations. You may now be seated. As directed by our marshals, please come to the stage to receive your diplomas. The role of graduates will be called by Associate Dean Andrea Carroll. Receiving the degree of Master of Laws, Clarice Bogier. <laughs> Sixteen Bonner. <laughs> Audrey. Michinu <laughs> Receiving the Juris Doctor or Juris Doctor and Graduate Diploma in Comparative Law. Lauren Elizabeth Accardo Williams. <laughs> Madeline Clark Aldridge. Charles Patterson Allenbaugh. Adam William Averight, cum laude. John Ernest William By the Third. Samantha Nicole Babin. <laughs> Bentley Baker the Fourth. <laughs> Trenton Christopher Ball. Chance J. Barnes, cum laude. <laughs> Anne Elizabeth Beckstrom. <laughs> Jamie Marie Becknell, cum laude. Nathan Carl Hunter Board. Matthew O. Bowles, cum laude. Andre Michael Boudreau. Janine Small Boyd.
Michelle Shanae Bradley. Victoria Lynn Brayman. Paul Stewart Brennan. Leah Kristen Brett. Quinn Kelsey Brown. Carolyn Elizabeth Buckner. Stephanie Ann Bueller. Catherine Jackieback Burke. Robert Nicholas Cavell. Stephen Eugene Cheatham, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. <laughs> Kayla Marie Cleary. <laughs> McRae A. Cleveland. Caitlin Margretta Klein. <laughs> Catherine Moselle Cook, magna cum laude. <laughs> Leah Canada Cook, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. Dustin Lang Cooper, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. <laughs> Joshua William Cox. <laughs> Jane Margaret Daly, cum laude. Clifton Andrew Alexander Dandison. Caroline K. Darwin. Carolina S. De La Pena. Patrick Thomas Early. <laughs> Lindsay Hale Elliott Smith, cum laude. <laughs> Shahoya Charlotte Farshian. Carly Ann Fauché, cum laude. <laughs> Garrett Nicole Folletti, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. <laughs> Evan Patrick Fontenot. <laughs> Nathan Wendham Friedman. Christian Andres Gallegos. <laughs> Patrick Thomas Geddes. <laughs> Stephen Philip Geist. <laughs> Joseph Severio Jardina.
Robert Lewis Gluck. Rome Camille Gosselin. William Chase Gore. John Philip Graff. Aaron J. Grimion. Tyler Robert Grelly. Allison Lorraine Grow. Daryl G. Gidry Jr. Tori Lynn Gidry. Melissa Mihan Ha. Brady McNeil Haddon, magna cum laude. John B. Hamilton. Jillian Hansen. Douglas Alston Harper. Blake Franklin Harris. Amy Nicole Hayes. Jasmine Antoinette Heatley. Amanda Marino Abair. Madison Mary Hintz, cum laude. Taylor Jude Herpin, cum laude. Caitlin Michelle Hollowell, summa cum laude and the order of the coif. Alex Edward Hotard, summa cum laude and the order of the coif. Maria Louisa Hugh. Taylor McCray Hunter. Ann Elizabeth Hudson. Caleb Joshua Huval. <laughs> Shannon Marie Jackal, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. <laughs> Christina Florence Jones. <laughs> Nathaniel Patrick Judge. Courtney, Courtney Lene Keck, cum laude. Cameron Douglas Keene. Samuel K. Kennedy. Ryan Hunter King, magna cum laude in the order of the coif. Adair Lemarie Kingsmill, magna cum laude. 
Gus Edward Lagner, cum laude. Andrew Ian Lawsaw. Anna Louise Landry. Eric Michael Landry. Theron Levi. Jacob Geis Longman. Gabriel Joseph Loop. Logan Robert Luquette. Ashley Marie Maiden. Hannah Marie Marler. Charles T. Matthews. Christopher Joseph Matulis. Haley Snellgrove Macharin. Ryan Philip McAllister, cum laude. Simon McLeod III. Cody James McElroy. Thomas Coulter McMahon. Walter Curtis Melnick. Sarah Ashley Messina. Cameron Sloan Miller, cum laude. Cody Jude Miller, summa cum laude and the order of the coif. Ariel S. Minor, cum laude. Christopher Robin Mitchell. Alex Edward Mohat, cum laude. Preston Ross Munson. Chelsea Elizabeth Murphy. J. Chancellor Naren. Joe Newman, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. John Woodley Nickel. Douglas Ryan Nielsen. Cassandra Rito Noel. James Huntington Odom III. Christopher Brechtel Orti. Hannah Schilling Pye.
Keenan Parr, cum laude. Peyton Francis Pawlicki, cum laude. John Michael Peacock. Julian Charles Petit, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. Eric Christopher Putterer. Paul Andrew Rabelais, Jr. Pierce Rappin. Henry Stephen Rauschenberger, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. Joy Elizabeth Reeves. <laughs> Megan Joy Riles, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. <laughs> Elena Ellen Richard. Joby Lynn Richard, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. Sarah Elizabeth Richard, cum laude. Kristen Joy Richardson. Cherry Lynn Roberts Mathern. Dave Michael Robichaux. Jana Lee Robinson. Timothy P. Robinson, cum laude. William Lewis Ryan. Patrick Ruan Schmidt. Robert Mosley Schmidt. Hunter Jacob Shane, magna cum laude. Mackenzie Catherine Schott, summa cum laude and the order of the coif. Emily Jean Schwab. Danielle Mikkel Sesney. Melissa Jade Schaefer, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. John David Shepard, Jr. Travis Lane Simmons. Ian Robert Simrod, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. Adrian Paul Smith. Harrison Scott Smith. Bet Rochelle Solomon. Ned Franklin Pierce Sonier Sr. <laughs> Brian, 
Brett Andrew Sparks, cum laude. Frederick Richard Sprinkle. Lauren Annalise Suddeth. Jackson Robert Swartout. Aslan Camille Taylor, cum laude. Hunter Hayes Taylor. Ryan Paul Tellup, magna cum laude and the order of the coif. David Ryan Teeter. Charles Terrio Tejada, Jr. Tori Siobhan Thibodeau. Brandon Pierre Thomas. Christopher Thompson. Hunter Blair Thrasher. Dylan David Touchstone. Laney Marie Trahan. Andrea Underwood. Brandon Michael Verrett. Eric Eugene Vincent Jr. Cody John Wagner. Tyler Stefan White. Alex Taylor Williams. Kelsey Lauren Williams. Victoria Page Wilson. Brock Logan Wimberly, cum laude. Elizabeth Eileen Wong. Benjamin Harold Wright. Joseph James Zohorchek. Alexandra Ann Zonbrecker, cum laude. And Wayne George Zarang III, cum laude. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the LSU Law Center class of 2017.
Now I am pleased to introduce Dr. Richard Kobeck, provost of LSU and my boss. Doc Dr. Kobeck began his tenure at LSU seven years ago after serving for 23 years in academia as a faculty member and administrator. Prior to joining LSU, Dr. Kobeck was professor and head of the Harold and Inga Marcus Department of Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering at Penn State, which was ranked as one of the best industrial engineering programs in the nation during his tenure. Formerly, he held the posts of professor and chair for the Department of Biomedical, Industrial, and Human Factors Engineering, and associate dean for research and graduate studies for the College of Engineering and Computer Science at Wright State University. Dr. Kobeck holds bachelor's degrees from Oral Roberts University and Northeastern Illinois University in biblical literature and psychology, and his master's and PhD in industrial engineering from Purdue University. Dr. Kobeck, thank you for joining us for our commencement exercise. Well, as, as Dean Galligan said, I've been here for now. This is out eight years ago yesterday, and he also mentioned a number of schools that I've worked at. In those eight years, I've been trying to answer this question that's fundamentally different about LSU in the state of Louisiana. Why is it I cannot go to a gas station, a hardware store, a park, you name it, without seeing LSU t-shirts, hats, bumper stickers, gear everywhere? There is something special, I call it the secret sauce about LSU that I did not see in Indiana and I did not see in Pennsylvania. So I've set about these past years trying to figure this out. And at first, of course, this was the same time in 2009 when I started that we were charging toward a national championship in baseball. I thought maybe it's because we win so many national championships. Well, the fact is we don't. And the fact is that there are other schools that win more national championships. So athletics, it's important, but that's not it. Our grounds are stunning. You know, yes, we got deferred maintenance, I understand that, but really, if you stand back and look at it, don't go inside sometimes, stand back and look at it. The trees are gorgeous, the architecture is stunning. We have an amazing campus, but so do other schools, right? So I'm still searching for that. And what hit me finally one day is it's actually not what we at LSU do. It's not the 32nd football commercial spots or our billboards, which we don't have many of. It's not what we do, it's what you do. And what struck me is the one thing that all the other schools that we compete against, frankly, academically, do not have are LSU alums. That's the secret sauce. And as Dean Galligan was talking, I was thinking about oftentimes I hear about our distinguished alumni, right? And people talk about the reputations of these individuals. Many are sitting here today. And if you did a word count, you would hear people say things like prestige and power and wealth and planes and boats, yep. But you know what they mostly talk about? Honor and integrity and honesty in service, in commitment. So what really strikes me is that that secret sauce is exactly what Dean Gallagher had encouraged you to consider when you started. That's what's special about LSU. The value system that your parents probably put imbued in you, that we've had the privilege of benefiting from while you were here, and now society has the benefit of having your value system applied to the legal challenges they face. So, on behalf of Louisiana State University, I want to thank you in advance for advancing our reputation in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Pro Provost Kobeck. Now I would like to welcome Patrick Geddes, president of the 3L class to the stage to deliver the class farewell. Patrick is from El Paso, Texas, and received his Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Texas at Austin, where he majored in government. Good morning and congratulations. Thank you as well to the family and friends who without which none of us would be here today. The first time the class of 2017 was all in one room together, we are instructed to look to our right 
and looked to our left. We were told that in the room around us, there were people with the potential to become the best. That we might even have a future judge, a future congressman or congresswoman, a legislature, or even a Supreme Court Justice of, of the state of Louisiana amongst us. Dean Galgan, I hope we don't let you down. So today, I'd like to repeat that same instruction. Look to your right and look to your left. Look at the classmates who, just like you, completed one of the most demanding law school curriculums in the United States. Look at the group of students that completed 94 hours of credit, while most law schools only require 83. Look at the students who learned both the common law and the civil law. See the students who have thrived in a grueling system and one who has even obtained a number of Cali Awards. Look, look around at the group of students who were the last to hear the stories of Pee Wee and Joseph and the, of the, from the incomparable legal mind of Professor Cheney Joe. Mrs. Joseph, we are honored with your presence here today. And we thank you for sharing your husband with us, whose goal in life it was to allow us to succeed after leaving the halls at PMH. To honor that legacy, I was humbled that our class decided that the mark we left on this school needed to, needed to represent the mark that Professor Joseph had left on each of us, helping ensure that his name remains on his favorite place in the Law Center. The class of 2017 wanted the future classes of the Law Center to know what a great impact Professor Joseph made, not only on us, but the entire state of Louisiana. Class of 2017, look to your right and look to your left. See the students who have already achieved great things. See the students who traveled far and wide to represent our school in external competitions. See the students who, through LSU's law clinic program, have already represented clients, seen clients released from jail, represented the state of Louisiana in criminal prosecutions, and helped victims of the flood gain protection of valid title of their homes. See the students who have written briefs and developed arguments that have even been argued in front of the Supreme Court. See even the student who's created the crawfish app. <laughs> look to your right and look to your left at the students who did not wait for the future before they began their fight to change in the community. Look to the right and look to the left at your classmates who become prosecutors, defense attorneys, litigators, transactional attorneys, who may represent corporations and somebody's grandmother. Look around at your classmates who have become magistrates, judges, and justices of the Louisiana Supreme Court, and maybe the United States Supreme Court. Look around at your classmates who will leave the law and our community better, better than when we entered it. Look to your right and look to your left at Louisiana State University's Paul M. A. Bear Class of 2017. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you, Patrick. Congratulations to each and every one of you. We wish you well as you go forth, and we know your careers and personal lives will bring you happiness and great satisfaction. You will always be a part of the LSU Law family, the special sauce, wherever you go, and we hope you will often return to your home here on campus. Class of 2017, please rise. You are now officially LSU Law alums. <laughs> to signify your status, you may now move your tassels from the right side of your TAM to the left, if you haven't already done so. Remember, I, I know you're going to have to go right back to bar prep, but please, please, please take a, take a minute, enjoy the day, enjoy your families, and if I can paraphrase Bill and Ted, study on dudes and dudesettes and be excellent to one another. Uh, 
On the way out today, the Office of Alumni Relations staff and other Law Center colleagues will give you a gift bag containing an envelope with your official LSU Law Alumni pin. Also enclosed, you'll find a letter from me welcoming you to the ranks of LSU Law Alumni and instructions for updating your address so that we may stay in touch with you. Your faculty will lead the recessional today and will create an honor corridor leading out of the arena through which you, our newest LSU Law alumni, will walk as you receive our congratulations. We ask all our guests to remain in your seats for the formal recessional of the graduates and our golden grads. I am pleased to once again present the graduates of the class of 2017. <laughs> 